All right, this is lesson 8.6. We have absolute versus conditional convergence, and then in this unit you also review for the unit A test. Okay, so now uh, what's happening is that if we take an alternating series or some series that has positive terms, negative terms, we want to look at that and term them as either absolute convergence or conditional convergence. Okay, so many convergence series have negative terms, alternating or some other pattern. Taking the absolute value of each term of a convergence series with some negative terms makes the new positive series less likely to converge since the sum will be greater without the negative terms. So this is how we term it. If the new positive series is still convergent, the original series, the one with positive and negative terms, is called absolutely convergent. It converges both ways, no problem. If, on the other hand, that positive series is divergent, the original convergence series with negative terms is called conditionally convergent. So sometimes it converges. Well, it does converge with the negative terms, but if you make it all positive, it does not converge. Okay, so that's all you do is con um, term them as such. So if a series converges after taking the absolute value of its terms, it is guaranteed to also converge with no absolute value. So if the positive series converges, the ones with the negative terms will also converge. So that's where we're at. All right, let's try this. Um, example number one. Why don't you look at that for a minute and see what you think. Okay, I hope you think what I think. Okay, so this one right here, this is a harmonic. And what we look at is it's uh, alternating harmonic. So as it is with positive and negative terms, it's an alternating harmonic as it is. So this thing right here, n equal to 1 to infinity, negative 1 to the n over n is an alternating harmonic. So this converges because the terms go to uh, 0 and they are also decreasing as we go for absolute value of those terms. Now if I look at all the absolute value ones, so n equal to 1 to infinity, I would just have 1 over n. This is a harmonic. It's a p-series with p equal to 1. So with this, this one will diverge. Okay, so what does that mean overall? Well, that means overall that my original series is conditionally convergent. Because the one with the negative values converges, the one with all the positive terms does not. Not so bad, is it? Okay, so then number two. If we look at number two, with this one, well, let's try. And remember, if the absolute value of that series, of all those terms, if that converges, then we're in business. So let's look at this right here. Here we have the absolute value of cosine of n over n squared. How do we figure out if this is convergent or not? Well, we can take all these terms under the absolute value symbol and then compare them to this series right here, 1 over n squared. So we're going to have a comparison test. So I, I look at all the terms, 1 over n squared is always going to be greater than the absolute value of the cosine of n all over n squared. Why is that? Well, cosine will fluctuate between negative 1 and 1. So the values will always be, when we take the absolute value of them, the values will always be less than 1. So the 1 will be on the high side. So in comparison of the 1 and the cosine of n, yes, 1 is going to be greater than that uh, for what we're dealing with. So now what we're saying then is that n equal to 1 to infinity of the absolute value of the cosine of n all over n squared converges. And since that converges by the direct comparison test, that means that my original n equal to 1 to infinity of cosine of n over n squared also converges absolutely. 
So if it does converge, once we take the absolute value of all the terms, then the original series that we did have will converge absolutely. I hope that makes sense. Now number three, well, I don't have any negative terms out of this one, so I don't have to worry about does this converge absolutely or, or conditionally. But we do have to figure out does this converge anyway. So if I look at this, as I go to infinity limit, and so I just have to look at the terms for this one. This would be e to the n over n to the e. This exponent is fixed, so that doesn't change things too much, but this is infinity over infinity. But which one's growing faster? Well, the numerator is going to be growing faster. So then this would be infinity. And so this is not equal to 1. I'm sorry, 0. So by the nth term test, this series diverges. So this is an example of some of the things that you'll have to go back in time and figure out and figure out if the series does converge or diverge by all those previous methods that we have done. All right, this is just a small little lesson, but uh, it will include everything else that we've done before. So we'll mix it up, and so that's where the difficulty comes in. Individually, you can do all this stuff, I'm sure, but when it comes to putting it all together, you got to keep your wits about you, and you'll be okay. Thanks for listening, and I hope you have a great day. Take care.